Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Time for another Metal Earth build. Fascinations has dipped their toe into another universe. We have Harry Potter and the Golden Snitch model. This looks to be a fairly simple build. I say that sort of thing a lot, but I think it's just one sheet and not a lot to it. Except for the fact that there's one big center ball that has to be carefully shaped. But, let's open it up and see what I make of it. The Golden Snitch. Inside we have a big bright sheet of silver and underneath a little bit of gold. Put that to the side. Open up with the directions. There's not a lot of parts here. Okay. Here we have difficulty. We have the usual introduction, Metal Earth 3D metal model, 360 view, the address to go to, the line drawing. We have a bit about insertion tabs and insertion uh, holes, fold lines. The needle nose pliers are helpful for assembly. The older part of the legend, when you see a blue circle in the directions, it means to insert and fold the tab over 90 degrees. The green triangle, when you see that, means to insert a tab and twist it 90 degrees. And here we have the newer legend, where you see an E pointing at the engraved side, and E points at a non-engraved side, and a tension point could be a lot of things. Sometimes there's accompanying text that explains it. Sometimes it's just pointing, make sure this part's facing this way, or these two tabs line up. It can take a little interpretation, but it's trying to get your attention about something important. Below that, we have the two metal sheets. Ta-da, and ta-da. The numbers on the chart to show you where, are, where they are on the sheets, on the metal sheets. No color coding, because there's barely anything here. We slide over to the page two. At the start of the assembly flow chart, we have one, we shape that like so, two, we shape that like so, and it's telling you the engraved side goes, looks like, it almost looks like the engraved side goes inside. That doesn't make a lot of sense. We'll find out more when we get there. Number three, how to do that. Four, and just follow down, flip to the back. We have the continuation of the instructions. And then on page four, the last little bit, and up here, 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 and you're done. Let's talk tools. I have a pretty standard set of tools that I use in most every build. I have needle nose pliers. I have flat nose pliers. I have flush clippers. These are a must for me. They clip parts off the sheets quickly and cleanly. I have a set of precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one with the pointed end ground down slightly, a flat set with a sort of curved tip, useful for twisting tabs in slightly curved areas. I also have a pretty standard set of tweezers with a flat angled end. These come in one of the Iconics kits, and I use them a lot. When it comes to shaping rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. Ring pliers or round nose pliers can be found with jewelry making tools and work wonderfully for curving delicate and or hard to get to areas. Taking a look at the directions, the metal sheets, got some basic tools to get started. Let's put this together. The instructions say the engraved side goes on the inside, but honestly, both sides are engraved. One is more engraved than the other, so I guess that's the side that goes in. I thought I would try to go for a neater look and have the tabs go inward so they'd be more hidden.
Unfortunately, the third tab I worked on bent inwards, and after I straightened it back out and tried to work with it again, it broke. I was quite surprised and unhappy. Nothing to do now but to move on. It's a little hard to see, but I'm supporting the outside of the ball with one or two fingers while pushing with the flat tweezers on the area, pushing the tab in as far as it will go, then bending it over with the edge of the tweezers. I nearly broke another tab. This time, I decided to bend the tabs outwards. Things went much smoother. The second one did not shape as easily as the first. Try to bend these tabs as close to the flat edge as you can. The tabs will line up with the slots better. The instructions say to bend these tabs to secure them, but I opted to twist them and make them more secure.
Because of that one tab, the two sides of the arm did not line up. Getting those lined up in parts 9 and 10 on was the hardest part of this build. I didn't put the back of the stand on right. I was quite frustrated at this point and not paying sufficient attention. It was at this point I decided to twist the tabs instead of continuing to fight trying to bend them over. I sometimes twist tabs in situations like this to secure things until everything is together, then later go back, untwist, and fold them over. I did not do that here, mostly out of frustration, but I may at some point later. If not for that one broken tab, this probably would have gone much better. The golden snitch. Look, I caught it. Well, I built it. It wasn't a matter of catching it. But this looks to be a simple build. There are not many parts. There's not a lot of complication to it. I've seen that it's ball shaped. I thought, okay, this is, a, this is like BB-8, a fair sized ball. I shaped it by hand. It wasn't that big a deal. Except I made a terrible mistake when I tried to fold the tabs so that they would go inside and be hidden because that was a lot more difficult to get them in their slots and as you saw one broke another one almost broke the one that did broke caused a bit of a cascade effect which made the stand not fit evenly and it was hard had a difficult time getting the stand together now this build took about you know, just under an hour it didn't take very long probably would have been a little bit quicker had I not had the difficulty with the tabs, had I just folded them out and got them in place and not broken that one. It might have, it's possible it would have only taken 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes at most. In the end, even though it got a little warped and I had some problems with it, it still looks very nice. The wingspan is greater than I expected. It's rounder than I expected. You can tell it's not perfectly round. It's a little bit flat along the, the center part here but all in all it looks really nice so I'm pleased. I'm going to stop there. If you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them down below. I've got more Harry Potter coming as well as other things. Thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.